can't get enough of the grass, huh? Me neither. I've been on this shit for uh, a little over a month straight now. If you haven't already, please watch the predecessor to this video, as most of this won't make any sense otherwise. But don't worry, I'll wait. Alright, that's long enough. So where did we leave off? Well, we generated all of these grass positions, and then we drew three squares at each position, and then we animated it. It looked decent at the right angles, but it had a major problem. If you look down on it from above, it's clearly just some squares. You may have also said to yourself, Ace Rolla, this looks absolutely nothing like Game of the Year 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You lied to us. And you're right, if you take a look at these screenshots from the game, you can clearly see that the grass has real geometry and is not just a square. So in this video, I'll be discussing how I obtained this more realistic foliage instead of faking it like we were previously. Just like in the last video, in order to render grass, we need a grass model to use, but Unity unfortunately does not have one for us. This means we need to make one ourselves. That's right. Did you think you could get away with just programming? Sorry, indie developers. You're gonna need to learn some more skills. I've never actually 3D modeled anything myself, though. So I started out by lying to Autodesk about my status as a student to gain access to Maya. I went into Maya and I put together a little grass blade model. It could probably be optimized more, but as it stands, it contains 15 vertices, which is plenty for getting a nice animation going. Now that we have a grass blade mesh, the neat thing is that I don't need to do anything new to get it working. All I need to do is replace the quad mesh I was instancing before with this new mesh. We can press play to see our new amazing grass blades, and it looks pretty bad. Without the image texture covering up space, we need to draw a lot more grass blades to make it dense enough. We can just up our values though, and we achieve the desired density. Another issue is that we are no longer relying on a texture to color our grass, so we should probably fix that. All of the coloring is going to be done in our fragment shader, the rendering pipeline stage that controls the final output of a pixel on the screen. I've decided not to use a texture and to parameterize all the colors instead so I can have fun playing around with it. My grass coloring works like so. I have two colors that form a gradient up the grass blade. Additionally, I have an ambient occlusion color that controls the color of the bottom of the blade as well as a tip color that additively blends with the top of the blade of the grass. It's pretty simple, but it allows me to do many different color combinations. Here's a few of my favorites. Outside of coloring, I also added the ability to scale the grass upwards manually and make it longer or shorter. Our grass is looking a little stiff, so we should work out a new animation. The biggest benefit of having real geometry for our grass is that we can have a very nice animation since each individual blade is simulated. If you recall from the previous video, we did all of our animating in the vertex shader. We could get away with it then, since each mesh only had four vertices, but doing all that math with our new grass would be quite costly given the major increase in vertex density. So we will be implementing a new method that involves a texture that scrolls across our grass field and displaces the grass. In order to support this though, we need to expand our compute buffer to hold more data. If you recall from the last video, we are storing all the grass positions in this big array that lives on the GPU. Thankfully, compute buffers can hold any arbitrary data type. If we create a struct that contains both the position of our grass object and its world space UV coordinates, we will now be able to sample this texture that will scroll across our grass. Once again, our animation is going to be trig function based. Let's start with a simple sine wave. I have changed the grass shader to visualize this texture that is overlaid on top of it. As you can see, we have a basic sine wave pattern on top. If we then add the current time step to the sine wave, we will see that the texture scrolls over the grass field and it looks like a flow field, kinda. 
Obviously the sine wave alone isn't going to cut it, so let's put some noise into the mix. By modifying the XY coordinates used in our sine wave, we can produce twists and turns in the texture that are most commonly used to create marble textures that look like so. I used this technique to generate my wind flow field because I thought they kind of looked like what I wanted. The way it works is we add noise to our XY coordinates before running them through the sine wave. The amplitude of the noise will control how twisty it looks, and the frequency will control how quickly the turbulence will fluctuate. After playing around with the amplitude and frequency, my flow field now looks like so as it scrolls across the grass. This, combined with our localized variance per grass blade as discussed in the last video, makes our grass field look like this with the normal coloring. Did you really believe it would be that easy? Did you really think we could just instantiate millions of blades of grass and get away with it? If you did, you're about to get an alarming visit from the performance police, pal. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I've been lying to you this entire time. The grass in the previous video covered a 300 by 300 meter plane. In order to get the same performance, this new grass is only covering a 32 by 32 meter plane. That's a performance loss of nearly 90%. Even worse, we couldn't even try to cover the original area if we wanted to. The performance would just be too bad. This is simply an absurd amount of grass that we're trying to create. So how do we fix this? Well, with doctorate thesis level algorithms, of course, The first step in making our grass work in the real world is with actual GPU frustum cooling. As I mentioned in the previous video, since our grass is instanced directly on the GPU, we don't get frustum cooling for free. We have to calculate it ourselves, which turns out to be really fucking hard. The reason this is so hard is because in order for our grass to be instanced, the memory buffer we use to sample grass positions must be contiguous in memory. That is, there's no gaps in the buffer, so we can't simply just mark grass positions as outside the camera view and move on with our day. The actual solution is much more sinister. The general solution here is called scan and compact. What we're going to do is we're going to take our grass position buffer and vote on the positions to determine which grass blades are in view of the camera. Then we're going to scan the vote buffer to calculate the new indices of the visible grass blades. Then we're going to compact the visible positions into a new buffer using the indices calculated above. In greater detail, with an example, take this buffer of five grass positions. First, we vote on the positions and mark which ones are visible with a 1 and the others with a 0. Then we scan the vote buffer. The specific term for this is prefix sum scan, meaning each element of the array becomes the sum of the previous elements in the array. This is the really complicated part that I wish I could explain in greater detail, but I'm simply not skilled enough to do so. Please refer to the links in the description that I used to learn the algorithm. Lastly, we use the scan buffer to copy data from the positions buffer into a new buffer using the positions calculated from before. The result is a buffer of grass positions that is contiguous in memory and only includes grass that is in view. This process executes every single frame to calculate which grass is in view and updates the buffers accordingly. But does it actually work? Yeah, it does. With the camera placed in the center of the plane, we see a nearly 50% performance increase, and when the camera faces away from the grass, we see essentially no change in performance from the max FPS that Unity 2022 displays. But does it scale? No, unfortunately not. We still need to do a lot more work to get this grass to cover the same amount of area as the grass in the previous video. This is a problem that I am still actively trying to solve since I learned how GPU culling works about a few days ago.
Overall, am I happy with the visuals of this grass? Absolutely. I think it looks very, very nice. If you liked it, or have any criticisms, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. There's still a lot I'd like to do with the visuals, but this was the best I could do given my two-week time constraints. In my next video, I'll be going over the full optimization pipeline and getting this grass to cover as large of an area as I want while still being highly performant. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed so you know when that video comes out, but until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.